Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be here again this year and welcome you to our 14th, as Dill said, uh, Professor Michael Kelly lecture on HIV and AIDS uh, to mark this year's World AIDS Day. And before I begin, can I say a very sincere congratulations and thank you to those extraordinary voices uh, that we heard earlier on from the Suso Gospel Choir. Um, Sublime is the only way you can, uh, words you can use to describe that. And I agree completely, life is much better when you dance. So uh, <laughs> let's keep that in our minds. So uh, that was beautiful, simply beautiful. Uh, this lecture series was established in 2006 uh, by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade to honor and indeed to recognize uh, the inspirational work of Father Michael Kelly. And it's a tribute to Father Michael that this lecture series continues uh, to this very day and to draw this level of interest and enthusiasm year after year. And I would like to begin by extending a very special thanks to the Irish Global Health Network uh, who have organized this event along with my own department uh, for the last number of years, a very fruitful partnership indeed. This lecture series continues to act as a platform for debate uh, on how best to ensure that individuals and groups that are discriminated against and indeed marginalized due to their social and economic status, uh, their sexuality or their gender, to ensure that they are not left behind in the fight against HIV and AIDS. And while Father Michael is not physically present with us here this evening, he continues to inspire all of us uh, with his deep insight and, and his understanding of how to overcome uh, the HIV and AIDS epidemic. In his adopted country of Zambia, and throughout the developing and indeed developed world. We are once again honored to have members of Father Michael's family with us this evening, and I would like to take this opportunity to formally welcome them here and thank them for being with us. Earlier this year, in February, uh, our Taoiseach launched Ireland's new policy for international development, a better world. And that new policy reaffirms and intensifies our continued efforts, efforts to contribute to a more equal, a more peaceful and a more sustainable world and to reach those uh, who are furthest behind first. That ambition always underpinning the work uh, we do in Irish aid. And a better world commits Ireland to scaling up our resources and our capacity in areas that directly align with tonight's theme, areas such as gender equality, sexual and reproductive health and women's economic empowerment. And at home and abroad, Ireland recognises that gender equality is fundamental to the transformations required to not only achieving the SDGs, but also uh, to achieve that promise of reaching the furthest behind first. And a better world includes a strengthened focus on improved health for women and girls, a new initiative on sexual and reproductive health, and an emphasis again on women's economic empowerment. We know that uh, by empowering women with greater agency, they are more likely to choose to have fewer children, they are more likely to access health services, uh, and they're more likely to have control over their own health resources. They're also less likely to suffer domestic violence. And Ireland's response to HIV and AIDS includes strong efforts and strong support focused on prevention, in particular prevention for those most affected by HIV and AIDS. Ireland remains simply committed to ending HIV and AIDS. And this year, my department, uh, we demonstrated this commitment uh, through our support to the Global Fund for AIDS, TB, and Malaria. And in October, I was proud to be able to increase Ireland's funding to the Global Fund for the next replenishment cycle by at least 50%. That's going to bring Ireland's uh, contribution uh, to at least 50 million euro over the period 20, 2020 to 2022. And while the global community has made great strides in the fight against HIV and AIDS, we still have not got to the bottom of this very significant public health challenge. Every single day, 5,000 people, 5,000 men, women and children become newly infected. And most of these people live in low-income countries, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, although many, indeed too many, are also Irish. These are people who do not get access to the necessary information uh, the services, the support that they need to protect themselves and their families. And many tend, as you would expect, to be the most vulnerable, the most marginalised on the very fringes of society and most at risk of infection. We must and we will do more to prevent 
and address gender-based violence in all of its forms. And we know that gender-based violence can be actually a major barrier to accessing services, resulting in more women, especially young women, uh, more likely to become infected with HIV. And the new <coughs> executive director of UNAIDS, Winnie Bianima, in her speech at the launch of their annual report, she spoke of the need to support those women who are subject to violence, and she said, we need to speak up for these women, we need to call for justice and an end to impunity. The world must be a safe space for all of us. We also need to talk about men and boys. And when I visited South Africa in 2017, I was particularly struck by the work uh, at the Sanke Gender Justice, Wellbeing and Outreach Office in Cape Town. And I visited the center there, sat down with the volunteers who were doing incredible work in that center, and hearing of their ambition to change the culture, to change the attitudes of men and boys uh, to women's empowerment, to ensuring uh, that women receive the supports that they need, and to ensuring that they are brought in from the very fringes of society in so many different parts of the world. Women living with HIV, sex workers, transgender women, and women who use drugs often face multiple overlapping forms of gender discrimination. And they are, as you might expect, dispor disproportionately impacted by HIV and AIDS. And in order to realize our promise to reach those furthest behind first, we will work to ensure that these groups are targeted and included in our interventions. Shortly, we will hear from Father Michael Kelly, who will again implore us to do more for young women, and I agree with him wholeheartedly on this. Young women aged between 15 and 24 are twice as likely to contract HIV as men of the same age. There are many reasons for this, including gender norms and that cultural bias I spoke of earlier, which act to restrict a woman's right to make her own decisions and therefore control over when, how, and with whom she has sex, as well as her ability to protect her own sexual health. We know that strong sexual and reproductive health services, which include the vital element of education on prevention, can prevent those new HIV infections from happening in the first place, while also helping those living with HIV to enjoy healthy lives. Access to sexual and reproductive health and rights services means increased HIV pre prevention and better access to treatment and care. And in the fight against this pandemic, Ireland is firm in our belief that education can make and does make a significant difference. Uh, through the partners we support, which include UNAIDS and UNESCO, our programmes focus on providing young people with the knowledge, with the information that they need to protect themselves from HIV, including through keeping girls in school and supporting comprehensive sexuality education. Ireland invests significantly in that comprehensive sexuality education programmes in Uganda, in Zimbabwe, in Zambia and in Ethiopia. And through this support, we hope to enable young girls to protect their health, protect their well-being, and protect their dignity. These programs act as a catalyst to advance gender equality and indeed the rights and empowerment of young people as a whole. When you leave this evening, I would ask each and every one of you to reflect on the fact that women and girls are disproportionately affected by HIV and AIDS. And we heard uh, to the extent, uh, the extent of that uh, disproportion earlier on. Women continue to carry an unequal burden and are experiencing less possibilities to reach their full potential. That is gender injustice with tragic consequences. But I also want to leave it tonight with two promises. Firstly, a promise that we will, <coughs> excuse me. Firstly, a promise that we will continue to work together to ensure that more women are at the center, right at the very heart of Ireland's efforts to ending this pandemic once and for all. And secondly, on my part, I can promise that women and girls will continue to be at the heart of every single aspect of our international development policy. Thank you very much indeed. Gurmahal.